wisdom. And the Holy Quran itself, if you remember, uh, Allah said in the Holy in the Holy Quran, "Walakad atayna atayna Luqman al Hikma." Anas anaskur Allah. Allah said in the Holy Quran, Surah Luqman. He said, "Walakad indeed." We have given Luqman, Luqman al Hikmah, wisdom, and iskurulillah. That means that you should thank Allah. And when you thank Allah, always remember, Wallahi, you are doing yourself some good. And Allah said, Waman kafara, anybody who has turned away from thanking Allah, I mean, Allah doesn't need him. Allah doesn't need us. We need Allah. If today you decided that you are not going to pray, remember, Wallahi, that does not going to do anything to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. It is you that will be in the lost. And we go further inside Surah Al-Luqman. Before I come back here, Luqman, when he was advising his son, he said, Ya Bunaya, Akim is Salata, Wa'amur bil Ma'aruf, Wanha anil Munkar, Wasbir alama asabak, in Nazalika min Azmil Umur. He said, Ya Bunaya, oh, my dear son, Akimi Salata, establish worship. In other words, always pray in time, even if you can't pray in time, but always make sure you pray. Adhere to what Allah tells you to adhere and things that Allah tells you not to do, try as much as possible to stay away from it. Nobody is perfect. Akimi Salata, Wa'amul bil ma'roof and encourage good doing. Encourage it. Do it and encourage others to be good. In other words, in other words, give good advice. Wa'amul bil ma'roof and he said to his son, Wasbir alama asabat that you should be patient from what it befalls you. Anything, as I said in the beginning, anything that befall Muslim, he said, Alhamdulillah. If it is good, you thank Allah for it. If it is bad, as what has been happening, all of us, we have lost, some of us has lost us have lost our income. Some we have lost, some have even lost their, uh, lost their lives. So we say, Alhamdulillah. So, uh, the word, I hope, uh, am I mute or you, uh, you hear me clearly? Assalamu alaikum. 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 Yes, we can hear you. We can all hear you. We, before we started, yeah, sorry, before we started, uh, we, we put a little rules that everybody should put their uh, on mute. And if they want to speak, they will raise their hands to unmute. Oh, yeah, because, to speak. because I thought in, uh, I'm just trying in case I'm mute and I don't know. So, that no, is no, 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 if you are no, muted, we can hear you now. Oh, good. Oh, yeah. Alhamdulillah. That's all what I want to know. That's all. Yeah. So, uh, the hikmah is what we're going to focus today as much as possible. Um, it was reported that Sayyidina Ali, uh, he was, when he was an, uh, the Khalifa, he was going somewhere and he saw children play. And, you know, all of us, sometimes you see a child, you just want to, you know, say a few words to see where the, what the, uh, the reply of uh, the child will reply 
two. Sayyidina Ali said to the uh, young man, young boy, do you want me to give you 2,000 dirham? That was the money they spent at that time. Maybe we could say maybe 2,000 pounds now or, or even more. Uh, and in return, so that you can be a fool. Uh, the child paused and said, no, I don't want you to give me 2,000 pounds and I'll be a fool. And said in Ali asked, why is that? And the child said, you see, if you give me 2,000 pounds and I'll become a fool, I'm going, because of me being a foolish person, I'm going to do something so feel foolish and the 2,000 pounds, I will lose it and the foolishness will, will, remain, will remain with me. That is a very poignant thing. In other words, foolishness, what comes with it? Um, Sharawi, he has said something and he had uh, remind us and he has uh, bring, brought a story from the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam. Because the time we live in, many people have commented, many scholars, that we live in a time that, that you know, what Allah has said that, uh, had commanded that in the Holy Quran, a lot of people have neglected it. That hikmah, that wisdom. A lot of people, especially even scholars, people that you should you know that they shouldn't they, they should not say certain things, have said it. In other words, Sharawi is saying that, and he's reminding us a, a case of a young boy. The young boy came to the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam and said, Ya Ashab, that a young man, a young man, Ashab, maybe somebody in the, uh, maybe 18, 9, 20, somebody who's just immature with all, you know, with all what has come with it. We all know Shahwa is the main thing. You are just edgy going here, going here. You know, the young man, he said he bravely came to the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam and said, Ya Rasulullah, azinli fizina. Oh, the messenger of Allah, please give me, a, give me permission so that I can go and do zina. We are not going to, I'm not going to go far because we all know what it entails, as we all know, nobody is perfect. But the young man openly, can you imagine that the messenger of Allah, the young man openly came to him. He didn't have, make, means, mix his words or means it. He just said bravely to the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam, you are the messenger of Allah. Allah sent you to guide mankind. But look, I have a problem. My desire is so high. And the Quran has forbidden us to do zina. And you has forbidden us to commit zina. So, but please allow me to commit zina. That is my only problem. My shahwa is so high. And the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam yukhfi illa tahu hakaza laja ila tabibi liyatli badda dawa it saraha. Sahrawi, may Allah have mercy on his soul said that. That was what the young boy confronted Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam. In here, Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam became the doctor. And the young boy, what? The patient. So he came to the doctor, Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam, 
And so Liyat ibn Dawa al-Sarahat, and he came to for the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam to diagnose his symptoms or, or to treat it. And he said, for my zakat of Rasul sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. And what did the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam say? Can you imagine? If it was to be these days, I don't, I don't want to imagine this. A young man go somewhere, I don't uh, some of these countries, whatever, or some of these ulama and say, look, this is what is happening. I have a shahwa, I want to do it. Um, I'm telling you, by the time they finish with him, he wouldn't have a, <laughs> a leg to stand on. Uh -huh. But that is why this word hikmah, the wisdom, the Sha'arawi has explained. I'm just reading what Sha'arawi, I mean, if maybe a lot of you might, 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 uh, might not have heard of him, but uh, uh, Sheikh Abdul Razak will tell you. He was one of the giant, giant, giant uh, 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 scholar in the Arab world. He was born in Egypt, but can you imagine he was somebody, even during Ramadan, lots of people, even in the Arab world, even in, in Saudi Arabia, listen to his stuff, see it. That is his book. It is 20 volumes. He thought from Egypt, uh, someone bought it for, for, for me. I'll continue to tell the story. So for Mazakal Rasul Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam, and he said, what did, what did the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam say to the young boy? Unzur ila min hajid ba'awati, kaifa yakun wa kaifa askal Rasul Sallallahu Alaihi what well, the soul of this young man. The prophet didn't shout at him. He didn't chastise him. He didn't call his sahaba and say, look, uh, tie him up and then what? <clears throat> uh, beat him up. The prophet calmly, he said, he calmly said to the uh, young man, atuhibuhu li omik, that's a question. He said, you know the zina you want to commit? He said, yes. He said, will you be happy if someone commit that zina with your mother? That was the word of the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam. He didn't beat the, the, the boy. He didn't shout at him. That's all. Kalala. And the young man said, no, Ya Rasulallah, you ill to Fidaka, Ya Rasulallah, I will uh, sacrifice myself to you. I will not allow anyone to commit that zina with my mother. Kala, faka zalika nasu, la yuhibu nahuli ummuhati. The prophet said, yes, it is exactly as everybody they will not like someone to commit zina with their mothers. This is hikmah. It's referring to this verse I've just quoted. If we're going to remain on it, believe me, it's for a long time, but it is very, very important. That hikmah, that wisdom. <clears throat> and he continued, the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam asked him, li So, Will you allow someone to commit zina with your sister? Would you like it if someone commits zina with your sister? The young man said, Kala la, ya Rasulallah. Oh, la, no, I will not like anybody to commit zina with my sister. The, imagine, let's imagine that this was. Then, not even now. Now we can say things that have changed. People will say, but this, the wisdom in this is telling us so many things. That hikmah, the wisdom. And he said, no, I, will not, I, I, I wouldn't like to see anybody committing sinna with my sister. And the prophet replied, فَكَذَلِكَ النَّاسُ لَا يُحِبُّونَهُ لِأَحْوَاتِهِمْ And the same thing, other people too will, will not lie. Uh, some people to, to commit zina with their sisters. The prophet is drawing the young man attention. 
in a very, very polite and with a, and, and a polite manner. <clears throat> For simple reason, the Prophet وسلم, was sent with that hikmah, the wisdom. Wahakaza and the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam continue and say, oh yes, even your aunt or even your own wife, you wouldn't want anyone to commit zina with your wife. So why do you like to do it to somebody else? And it goes, Summa wada a Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam yadahu sharifata ala sadri shah. And the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, after counting all these things to the young man, what the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam did was that Allah, he, he placed his, his hand, the Prophet uh, placed his blessed hand on the chest of the young man. And he pray, Allahumma naki sadrahu wa hasin faryahu. Oh, Ya Allah, naki sadrahu. Make this man's heart clean. Give him a clean heart. Wa hasin faryahu. And protect Uh, protect him, in other words, pro uh, 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 protect his private parts. Fakama Shab wa Abgaluma Yakunu Ilehi and Yazni, what were you cool? And the young boy, the young man stood up. What were you cool for? Wallahima Hamat Nafsi Bishe in Minhaza. Illa zakaratu ummi wa uhti wa sawji. And he said, look, after I left the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, he said, for wallahi, I swear by Allah, I have never looked at anybody or intend any to do anything like that, to commit that zina, whatever you're going to call it, Illa zakar to ummi. When I'm going to do that, I remember my own mother, as the prophet said to me. Wa uhti. And I remember my sister. Was And I remember my, my own wife. You see, these stories, it is there for a purpose. It is not there to tell anybody, oh, you are you, are, you, are, you commit sin, this one commits sin. Wallahi, wallahi, wallahi. All of us, we have shahwa in us. The shahwa is going to stay with some of us, maybe till the end of our days. May, may Allah protect all of us. All of us, nobody is perfect. As, as the, uh, the, uh, the, uh, someone said that perfection is what Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. The Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, he himself said that, that oh, all of us, we are capable of doing evil. Illa and, and, and uh, he said, unless me, Allah has shielded me. All of us are capable of doing things that is not good. It's not only zina. And the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam said that sometimes people the one uh, in the Yom al Qiyamah, some people will go to hellfire and they are not going it because they committed zina or they committed big, big, you know, as a uh, Zulu. Sometimes it is something so simple that we, that things that, uh, uh, in other words, the Prophet wasallam tried to tell us that sometimes things that we think that it is too, what the person did, it is too evil. It turned out to be that what we rather doing, it is even more evil. 
uh, remember the verse in the Holy Quran. Allah is saying that uh, I, I, uh, do not uh, backbite one another. And what did Allah describe it? Allah described it and said, look, do any of you desire or want to, to, to eat the dead flesh of what? Dead flesh of your brothers. You wouldn't want to do that. So this is uh, the word of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. So when we look at it, we realize that uh, these are what we are lacking this is. Hikma. What we are going to take, or we Muslim Ummah, we need to take and um, show to the world that. Islam that the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam preached. It is what we are preaching now. Uh, shall we continue? Please remind me, if you think that I'm coming to waste my time, please let me know. This, because as this will go for, uh, uh, inshallah, next week, uh, inshallah. So I'll say, are we continue? What kind of is a sami and share in la yurji him min zambit or fahishatan fi majma'in? في مستمع الإيمان بالمدينة في في المدينة كان يساعد منبر شريف ويقول ما بالك أقوام قالوا كذا وكذا. شعراو continue he said that that the Prophet صلى الله عليه وسلم whenever there is a rumor anything that he has heard he will not come to the masjid. And then man, uh, uh, he will not confront that person <clears throat> in the mosque. He will say to the uh, he will say to the pers, uh, he, he, will, he will say it exclusively to everyone. He said, I've heard that some of you are doing this and doing that. So please, can you put a stop to it? And when we look onto it, that calling people to the name of Allah, to the way of Allah with wisdom. There's another wisdom. You know, Prophet grandson, uh, Hassan and Hussein, it been mentioned, they saw a man perform ablution. And the way the man was carrying on his ablution was referring to the way ablution should be started from washing your face and all. He started it from elsewhere instead of his face and others. Okay. Hello. In the understanding. No, she can't. And what actually happened was that they were looking at him and they did not want to embarrass him. So after the man finished, later on they called the man the man came and he said, oh, oh, uh, an elderly man said, oh, please, between me, Hassan and Hussein, we are arguing who knows how to perform ablution best. That was their message to the man. How to perform ablution best. So Hassan uh, said, look, so please, uh, we want you to watch us perform ablution, me and my brother, so that you know who's the one know how to perform ablution. And Hassan, uh, uh, take uh, some water, took some water, and watched himself perform the ablution very nicely. At the same time, Sayyidina Hussein to fetch some water and perform the ablution, Perfectly. And they told the man, can you judge in between us who knows how to perform ablution? The man paused in a minute and said, oh yeah, 
all of you, I think your evolution is perfect. You see, they did that to correct the man instead of confronting him publicly. That is another wisdom on how to call people into what? Ila sabir rabbika bil hikmah, the hikmah. Instead of what we have witnessed uh, about ISIS, whatever we're going to call them, believe me, some of them, the so-called, you know, those who want to establish their Islamic state or certain people around the world, we see them. They have done damage to Islam than even the uh, enemies of Islam will ever dream of. <coughs> they have anything. Some of them, you will never be able to believe them. You will never be able to see. We will never be able to please them. It's either you follow, you dress how they dress, you do everything according to how they do it. If you don't, that is it. You are their enemy. You must grow the beard the way they grow their beard. You must wear your, your jubba the way they wear it, even to a point that when they see you, they look at your hand, what are you wearing? May Allah protect all of us. Uh, I've been given a message because there will be question and answer. Uh, Sheikh Abdul Razak, uh, Inshallah, I mean, uh, the, the, we, we shall continue whatever uh, where we stop. We shall continue, uh, inshallah, next week. But uh, Sheikh Abdul Razak, if you have any nasiha, and then maybe if there's like, any question and answer, please. Salam alaikum. Wa alaikum salam. Yes. I think, I mean, I'll put a message out there to ask whether, I mean, there are any questions for yourself and the other sheikhs present. <clears throat> I think the expectation was that if there were no questions, then I'm sure the general consensus would be for you to carry on. So I don't know whether there is any individual who's got a question that you want to ask now. I suppose we may as well, I mean, ask those questions now. And I think the plan is for us to try and finish off latest by half past seven. So this is just, I mean, an open invitation. If anybody's got a question, then this is the time to. I mean, ask the question. Yeah, in, a, in addition, salam alaikum. In addition to Brother Ali, uh, if you wish to um, ask a question, just raise your hands and then unmute and then ask your question. And inshallah, our sheikhs are more than um, happy and ready to um, answer your question. I think Sheikh Abdul Razak is talking. Can anyone hear me? Yes, we can hear you. Alhamdulillah. Alhamdulillah. Okay. So, Alhamdulillah, Rabbil Alameen. We thank Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala for, for, for good start and good beginning, inshallah subhanahu wa ta'ala. So, for us to have, uh, what's the time now? So, almost uh, at seven o'clock. We got uh, more 20 minutes, something like that, to, to wrap up. So, inshallah, yeah, ready for any any questions, inshallah, and then we take it from there. Uh, can I also say that, Imam, I've got a few messages that I will want to pass on to members. So maybe we leave the last five minutes yeah, for yeah. messages. Yeah? So when it's about 7.25, then I will come in and give some a few messages to members, inshallah. Inshallah. Okay, I have a question, Sheikh Abdul Razak. No. So, um, all right, when you're praying and um, you recite Fatiha, you say Bismillah before you, you recite Fatiha, right? I wanted to know that Bismillah, do you have to say Bismillah in every rakat before you start Fatiha in every rakat? Or 
is the bismillah in the first rakats before fatiha enough? Or do you have to say bismillah for every every rakats fatiha? Alhamdulillah, wa salatu wa salam ala Rasulullah. Saying fatiha uh, in the salat, um, some scholars uh, make it compulsory. They have to say uh, fatiha. Uh, Bismillah. Some scholars uh, did not make it uh, compulsory. Some scholars say it's part of the reading. Uh, that's like it's a verse within the any surah, uh, within the surah, like it come in in Fatiha and somewhere, and they all have the uh, right to what they are saying. So for you to read Fatiha, I mean, you say Bismillah, maybe silent. And some people saying the Bismillah louder. When, when you read, like when the Imam is leading, reading uh, the Quran, when you finish the Fatiha to say a Surah, if it's uh, uh, beginning of the Surah, you say Bismillah, you're okay. Your Salat is, uh, is intact. Uh, but you don't need to say Bismillah because you've already said Bismillah in, in Fatiha. Okay. You no. Know? Because that the Fatiha is the most important in prayers. You know, you can pray, uh, fat, uh, you can do prayers with Fatiha and your prayer is intact. And you can pray without Fatiha, no, mat no matter how much Surah you read, your prayer would not be uh, uh, accepted. Uh, I mean, praying is uh, saying Fatiha to uh, to pray. You would, if Fatiha is the most important thing to to you to to pray with, Inshallah. Quran. Salam alaikum, Imam. Alaikum salam. Uh, can you increase your volume a little bit for us, please? Uh, the, the 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 volume of uh, the phone's volume or the speaker's volume. I think mm. my volume is even full. Okay. Uh, I don't know where. I've got a question. This is a question that may have been asked of you several times. Uh, suppose you are you you are in prayer. You said Allah, but you are reciting your fatia, and then you saw a wild animal running towards you. What do you do? Should you? Abandon the salat and run away, or have faith in Allah and stand there and face it. Of, and of get course, uh, this is something you know a clear uh, reasonably you need to run away. You can see like a scorpion in front of you, you kill it, and then you continue your prayer. If it's something you can kill it in a second, let's say a scorpion, uh, a snake is something big, so that will deter you from Kibla, yeah? For some, let's say you are praying and you see a, a, a scorpion, you can pick up your, your shoes on your side and, and hit it and kill it. And within a short period of time, you can continue your salah. But something like, if it's something big, let's, let's say snake, for example, for a snake to get, to be able to kill it quickly and continue your salah, uh, it may not be possible. <clears throat> so, uh, by the time you say you finish with, with, with the snake, maybe you turn away from Kibla. Then you come and start your prayers. But you see some uh, some uh, bees, some big animal coming. Uh, I think it's the best thing to save your life and, and get reward from it, inshallah, from, than, than inshallah. staying there and losing your life. That one is no. Uh, is something straightforward, inshallah. Yeah, our prayers. Now, inshallah, any uh, Imam, I've got I've got a question. Okay, my question is that you've started your salat and you've recited your fatiha and your intention in that raka that you were doing is to recite. A particular surah. So, in the middle of reciting that particular surah, you got stuck. Or you had, I mean, your mind just went blank, so you couldn't carry on with the with the whole surah. So, if you stop that recitation there because you couldn't remember the other bits to carry on with the surah, 
and you carry on with your salad, is your salad valid or do you have to, because you didn't complete that surah, do you have to start and recite another surah? No, your prayer is just intact. As, as I uh, coming back to the last uh, answer to the question, uh, the, the last question, uh, mm -hmm. the, the surah, part of the surah that you've recited is sufficient to, you know, to, to, to complete your salat without the rest of the surah, inshallah. Mm -hmm. As far as the fatia is, is good. Inshallah. Is fatia is in prayer. Fatia is the most important. You know, you know, fatia is the most important. Surah, if you miss surah uh, in salah, uh, you you, ju you just do uh, uh, kabli. You know, and doing kabli is not a, a pillar in 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 prayers. It's just something that to uh, to just um, uh, correct your little mistake that you, you have in salah. So when you finish the salah, you sit down, you do your last tahiyya, uh, that's kabli. When you finish your last tahiyya, then you you do sujood twice mm -hmm. and sit back and say, Salaamu Alaikum Wa Rahmatullah. Yeah, but if, you, if you forgot to do surah at all. Mm -hmm. Yeah, uh, but Imam. The fatiha mm -hmm. is sufficient for the prayers. Okay, if I mean just to clarify, Imam. So, if you go stuck, like the question that I asked, if you go stuck and you carry on with your salad, you don't need to do kabli because you still no, recite the no. surah exactly. You so you only do that kabli. if you didn't recite any surah at all. No, you, 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 don't, you don't need. You don't need to do kabli. Okay. You can. I mean, if you're stuck and you think that you want to read more, yeah, yeah, you can pick up another surah that you you feel comfortable of reading. If you want to uh, read more, but if you start, you already start the surah and you start. You don't have to finish the surah to complete the the raka. So whatever you start, the amount of the uh, ayat you you read is sufficient to complete the salat, inshallah. Allah no I hope it's okay. It, it's it's uh, it's clear to us. I just yes, wanted to say, clear. if anyone has any questions that they don't want to speak, they can type it in the text box and uh, we'll be able to pick it up. So you can type your 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 question in the text box and we'll see yeah. it. And Sheikh Abdul Razak will be able to see it. Yeah, uh, uh, it's good. If anybody wants to do that, even if we, if we uh, time is up, we can only always answer it next uh, inshallah, next week before we start, we start, we start the top seal or after the top seal, we can answer them. You know, put it in in, in writing, mm -hmm. and then it can be answered. No. Hmm. I don't know if there are any more questions. Uh, I think we'll give it a couple in that, more. In that case, brother, carry on with your messages then because we've only got 12 minutes. Yes, exactly. Okay, uh, a few messages. Yeah. <laughs> Go. Yeah, when when message come, we can come back. So yeah. can we use the, the wait, wait, waiting time to... Uh, uh, oh, okay, to yes. Your message, okay, yeah, a few messages that I wanted to pass on to members. Uh, I think, I mean, we... Ramadan is one of the times that as an organization, I think those of us who've been around long enough, we know that Ramadan is the main part of the year that we do most of our fundraising activities. But these days, I mean, this year, of course, everything is online, everything is on Zoom. So I think the word here is that I will encourage members. I mean, we, are, we have signed up with Just Giving. And for those of you who are taxpayers, if you go to the Just Giving page and you make any donation i mean there's also a button there that you could take gift aid so with a gift aid we get more money because let's say for as an example if you donate 10 pounds for every 10 pounds that you donate we get an extra two pounds 50. 
if you are a taxpayer and you sign up for gift aid. So I will encourage members to go to the Just Giving page. When you go to Just Giving page, there is a search button. If you search Ghana Muslim Union UK, our details will come up. Then there are buttons there. You could either press the donate button if it's just a one-off payment, or if you want to do it recurrent, let's say every month. So I will encourage people to please use that facility as well. The other thing as well that members should be aware of, we've signed up with a, an organization my, called My 10 Nights. And what this organization, what they do is that it's a platform and the intention is to try and maximize all our contributions for the last 10 nights of Ramadan. I mean, we, it's something that we're working on now. Inshallah, in the next few days, it should all be set up on our website. So that, let's say, if for the last 10 nights, if you want to donate 100 pounds, maybe you could actually set it up to make sure that maybe every night of the last 10 nights, you donate 10 pounds. So that on the day, that's a little cutter, inshallah, because you've set that up already, you're not going to miss. I mean, that hasana that you're going to get for that donation. So I hope in the next few days, we will get all that clear and all that will be sorted on our website. The website is almost complete. And there are just a few tricks here and there to make sure that everything is working perfectly. So if anybody has got time, they want to look at it, it's Ghana Muslim UK, gmuuk.org. Have a look at the website and we are flexible. We will take feedback. If there's anything anybody sees, that they think that, well, we should put it on our website as well, or any changes, please let us know. And we could always feed that back to the designer as well. Another thing that we, we members should also be aware of, we've got a Facebook account, we've got Insta Instagram account, we've got YouTube account as well. But the Shakiri will put all those links on the sidebar when we finish. I'm and if anybody them. wants to... I'm doing that now, so they'll, you, you'll be able to see it now, so yeah. Okay, yes, Brother Shakiru says he's doing that now, so if anybody wants to follow us, whether it's YouTube, whether it's Twitter, whether it's Instagram, we're making sure that we've covered everything. I mean, uh, for those of you who are young and maybe social media is, <laughs> is, is your thing, yeah, everything, we've covered, we've made sure that we've covered everything. For old people like me, maybe I think we'll just stick to WhatsApp. Okay, I think Brother Shakir has also put a link there for the Just Giving as well. So if anybody wants to make donation, that information is also available. I think that's about it for me. So if anybody else has got any questions, I mean... Uh,